Continuing on from our first tutorial where we made the background, now we're going to make the gill. So I'll show you how to use a photograph as a reference and it might be a good idea when you're completing your vector portrait if you're using a photograph of yourself in a pose. So first of all we're going to go file and place to put the photograph onto our document and just click and then resize the image now this layer um, if you go into your layers panel um, first of all I would choose the opacity of it so I can see through and then I'm going to go into my layers panel. If you, yours isn't up, you can go window and layers to bring it up. And then I'm going to click next to the eyeball just to lock that layer. And now I can't move it around at all. Oops. Okay. Let's start with... Let's start with her face. So... To complete this, I'm going to use the curvature tool. And I'm just going to use the curvature tool to roughly trace the outline of the girl. So if I want to go out straight, say I don't want that to curve around, I want it to come out straight instead, I can double click on that anchor point. And if that fill there is annoying, you can swap the fill and the stroke line around, so then you just get your outline. Might even bring that opacity up slightly so you can see what I'm doing. And in fact, what was drawing there wasn't a cheekbone at all. It wasn't a nose at all, it was a cheekbone. Whoops, if you make a mistake, you can always use the delete anchor point tool. If you hold down the pen tool, there it is. And then you just have to click on the anchor points that you don't want. And if I go back to my curvature tool, I can start tracing my shape again. Now I'm just going to close that shape. It doesn't matter what the back of it looks like because her hair is going to be sitting over the top. So I'll swap the fill in the stroke outline and give that one a skin tone texture. Okay, good. Now I'll make the hair shape. So again with the curvature tool. And I'll swap my fill in my stroke over again so it's easier to trace. going to roughly outline the hair shape here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. It's a little bit different to my first one, but that's fine. You get the idea. All right, so now she needs an eyebrow and a little braid and an eyelash. So I'll use the curvature tool again to create just a curved line and make sure I spot the fill and the stroke around. I'll make that slightly darker 
and then I'm going to pull up my stroke panel to create the brave. If you can't find your stroke panel, it will be in window under stroke. I'm going to cap the ends so both of the ends are rounded and then I'll taper the end so in profile. If you don't have any of these options showing to you, you might need to click on the right. Um, so if your stroke panel comes up and it looks just like that, then just click on the top right hand corner and click on show options. Then I'll increase the weight of the stroke as well and go object expand appearance to turn that into a shape. Okay, that's fine. Now I'll do the same for the eyelash. So it's important when you're double click to change directions. It's important when you're making these shapes um, that you're not actually starting on another path because the anchor points will get messed up. So I'm just I've made that shape over the top of the other one and then I can send it to the back or send backwards so you can go command right square bracket until it goes behind the face or command left square bracket is it? command left square bracket or you can keep going object send backwards until it's just sitting behind the last object you made Okay, so she needs an eyebrow now. We're going to do the same thing we did for the um, braid. And we'll just swap the fill in the stroke around. Then in your stroke panel, just give a round cap to the ends and taper them. And we better go object, expand appearance. I'll make that fractionally lighter. Okay. Yep, that's looking fine. All right, now I'll give her a jumper. So to do that, again, I'm just going to use the curvature tool. And double click when I get when I need to change directions. Double click. So I find the curvature tool is a lot easy to easier to use for more organic shapes because it's very intuitive and it sort of follows around the shape of the thing that you're trying to outline. Whereas the pen tool, it can take a lot of practice to manipulate it and get the handles working. Okay, so I'll give that a different colour. Oh, that's not a nice colour. And then we'll send this one backwards. So we'll go command and left square bracket, command left square bracket until it goes behind. What's next? We'll give her a skirt. So for the skirt, instead of making a very organic shape, we might just we might use a rectangle. And then I'm going to use my direct selection tool here to manipulate these individual anchor points. I'll click on that and drag it in. I'll click on that and drag it in to make a skirt shape. And then I'll go back to my selection tool and just lower it down a bit and go command left square bracket until it's sitting behind the jumper. And then for the pleats, I will get the curvature tool and just roughly make some shadowy parts might even go object transform reflect and check vertical and go copy just click and drag this one over and then make them a little bit 
fraction darker. So I'm going to select all of those shapes, one, two, three, and um, grab my shape builder tool so I can cut off these two little bits down the bottom. And then I'll go command left square bracket until they're sitting under the jumper. Beautiful. Now for her hand, um, we are going to use the curvature tool again. This is where you will definitely need to swap your fill and your stroke around. And the good thing about vector portraits are they are more illustrative so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then just close the shape. I'm going to eyedropper that skin colour. It's not the prettiest hand in the world, but it will do. If your shapes are looking a bit wonky, you can go select the shape and then go to the smooth tool, which is locating, located behind either your shaper tool or your pencil tool. And then you can click and drag over. over the area you want to smooth out. So you can fiddle around with this. I'm going to go command left square bracket until this is sitting behind the jumper. Then I'm going to go command C and command B and just drag out my copy a little bit and I want to make this one fractionally darker. Oops dragged out the wrong one. That's okay. I'm going to go command left square bracket so that's sitting underneath. And then I'll just position it so it looks like a, a shadow. Okay, I think I'm done making the girl here. So I'm going to go back through my layers and just try and find where that, here it is. So I'm going to delete that picture now and select the parts of my girl and group her together by going Command G. I'm not quite happy with this hair shape, so I'm going to use the pencil tool to extend it out a little bit. And you can do this with any of your shapes. So with that one selected, I'm going to grab my pencil tool. I'm just going to draw along the path and finish along the path just so I can fix up that shape a little bit. She looks a bit better now. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is make these little foggy, foggy things. And to do that, I'm just going to grab my curvature tool and make a a random shape and up here I'm going to select that fading sky gradient so it fades out to nothing. I'm going to select radial and double click on this end slider. I'm going to make it a lot lighter. And turn this one completely white. Okay, 
Okay, let's see what that looks like then. So I'm going to position it under her face so it's like she's breathing onto the glass. And I will go command left square bracket until it's sitting behind her face. I might have to do that for a bit. Oh, there we go. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and click and drag out a copy and just enlarge that and that's already sitting behind. So now it looks like she's fogging up the glass. Might even change that to make it more of a pure white colour. Okay, so in the next tutorial then I'll show you how to make the shapes in her jumper.